Hello and welcome. In this video we will learn how to improve the surface mesh quality. We will explore different approaches such as adding the improved surface mesh quality task, identify the problematic region of the model and apply additional local sizing controls where needed. So let's get started. Let's first start with understanding what surface mesh quality means and how it is measured. When fluid meshing generates the surface mesh, the mesh elements used are ultra-angular. The default quality measure used to evaluate the surface mesh is the skewness. It determines how close to ideal a face is. For triangular elements, this means how close to an equilateral triangle the element is. A skewness of zero indicates an equilateral element, while a skewness of one indicates a degenerate element. Bad quality surface mesh can result in low quality volume mesh that can cause convergence issues during simulations. In a nutshell, the better the volume mesh quality, the smoother the simulation will converge. It is generally recommended to keep the surface mesh skewness to below 0.7. There are different methods to improve the surface mesh quality. Let's explore them using an example. Launch a new session of fluid meshing using four processors. Start a new water type geometry workflow. In the import geometry task, keep the settings as default and import the geometry file for this exercise. Here we have a fluid enclosure inside which a body of influence surrounds the model of an aircraft wing and its wake region. The next step is to add some local sizing. First, let's add a BOI sizing. Select BOI in the label list and set a target mesh size of 25 mm. Next, we will add the curvature sizing on the leading edge of the wing. Set a minimum size of 2 mm and a maximum size of 10 mm. Change the curvature normal angle to 12 degrees. Select LE wing in the label list and add the local sizing. Now, move to the Generate the Surface Mesh task. Set a minimum size of 20 mm and a maximum size of 400 mm. Keep the rest as default and complete the task. Once the surface mesh is generated, a warning message is printed in the console. The maximum skewness value is 0.95. This means that the mesh quality is bad. Let's find out where the regions with bad quality cells are. Click on Display, Grid. In the menu, deselect these options and activate Quality. Set the minimum value for the face quality range to 0.8. Now, click here to toggle the tree view. Then, click on the adjacent button to select all the boundaries and click on the origin label so that only the mesh boundaries are selected. Press display to visualize the bad quality elements. As you can see, the trailing edge of the wing is the problematic area. You can now select all and the face zones relative to the wing to display back the wing. Let's now try to improve the surface mesh quality. Right click, 
the generate the surface mesh task and add the improve the surface mesh task as suggested by the warning message. Keep the limit value as default and complete the task. The process managed to bring the maximum skewness down to 0.86 and the problematic areas left are now highlighted to help diagnose the problem. The quality of the cells on the trailing edge of the wing was too poor for the improvement process to be successful. In such cases, the best approach to improve the mesh quality is to add additional local sizing where necessary. Click on the last local sizing and select Revert and Edit. Click on Add Local Sizing. Add a face sizing with a target mesh size of 1 mm. Select the TE Wing label and complete the task. Select Yes on the pop-up message. Now generate the surface mesh again. The mesh quality has greatly improved with a maximum skewness value of 0.74. We can further improve the mesh quality using the previously added task. Set the limit value of 0.6 and complete the task. The mesh skewness has been further reduced to a value of 0.59. This is a very good improvement. Let's now see how the surface mesh quality will impact the final quality of the volume mesh. Let's compare the volume meshes generated from the surface mesh that we created in the process. The same settings have been used in all the cases. The first mesh is obtained by using the 0.95 skewness value surface mesh and it has a minimum orthogonal quality of 0.05. In a nutshell, the orthogonal quality describes the quality of a volume mesh, values very close to zero, typically below 0.1, indicate a bad quality mesh. Further details on the orthogonal quality will be covered in a separate video. The second mesh is generated after improving the first surface mesh. Here, the minimum orthogonal quality is 0.15. That is not too bad, but this mesh does not fully respect the original geometry. The third mesh is created using the surface mesh after adding the local sizing on the trailing edge. This one has a minimum orthogonal quality of 0.2, which is good. The fourth mesh is generated after improving the surface mesh once the local sizing has been added to the trailing edge. Here, the minimum orthogonal quality is also 0.2. As you can see, a bad surface mesh quality can lead to a bad volume mesh. However, fluent meshing can sometimes produce good volume mesh even if the maximum skewness is above 0.8. For such cases, it can be worthwhile to proceed with a volume mesh and check the final quality. Ultimately, the volume mesh quality is what matters. So, let's recap. It is always a good practice to have a good surface mesh quality in order to generate a good volume mesh and avoid possible convergence issues during simulation. If a surface mesh quality is poor, we can use the improve the surface mesh task to help improve the quality or at least identify the problematic areas. If that method alone does not solve the problem, it is recommended to add local sizing to improve the mesh elements where needed. If the mesh quality does not improve to the desired level, it can be worthwhile to proceed with the volume mesh generation to see if a good quality mesh can be still obtained.